Welcome to another module of this course, Microwave Integrated Circuits. In the previous module, we had talked about multi-section transformers and the formula for the input reflection coefficients when a number of transmission line segments are connected in cascade. Uh, but I had also mentioned that this is just an analysis formula. Uh, you, uh, you, here we find out the input reflection coefficients when we know what the uh, what the characteristic impedances and the length of the individual transmission line segments are. But in design, when we are going to design an impedance transformer, we have to do the reverse. That is, we are given a certain uh, characteristics, uh, certain impedance matching characteristics in the frequency domain, and then we have to find out the individual uh, uh, the characteristic impedances of the individual transmission lines. So, the first step into achieving this is to write down certain prototype equations and then compare those equations with the formula that we derived. So, the first prototype uh, equation is uh, that of what we call binomial transformer. Now, the formula for the binomial transformer, the input reflection prototype function is written like this. Now, the interesting thing about this formula is that gamma in at theta equal to pi by 2 is 0 and d gamma in upon d theta k for k between 1 and n minus 1 is also equal to 0. This condition that is satisfied is called the maximally flat condition. Now, if we uh, further uh, analyze this uh, this uh, equation that we just wrote down, we see that gamma in for theta equal to 0 is given by this equation. We also know that when theta is equal to 0, that is the DC condition and gamma in should be simply equal to gamma L, the load reflection coefficient. This is because say we have a number of sections like this say n number of sections with a load ZL connected, then gamma in for theta equal to 0, this will be a straight cut short and so in that case gamma in at theta equal to 0 will be equal to gamma L. So, from this we can straight away write down an equation A is equal to this. Now, substituting this uh, value uh, in the uh, so then you know if we substitute this value of gamma a in the expression for gamma in what we get is if we try to find out the mo modulus or the magnitude of this function gamma in uh, then that comes out from this equation as cos theta n. So, now from here if we try to uh, define the bandwidth and we recall how we defined the bandwidth in the previous lecture, uh, we, uh, we said that if we take a certain gamma m and for all values of theta for which gamma in theta magnitude is lesser or equal to gamma m, then those values of theta correspond to the bandwidth. That is how we define the bandwidth. So, from here we can find out the value of theta m for which we get gamma m, for which modulus of gamma in theta is equal to gamma m. So, that value of theta 
is using this equation is found out as and then once we know the value of theta m we can find out uh, the fractional n fractional bandwidth delta f upon f0 as 2 minus 4 theta m upon 5. Now, if we can for a moment go back to the slides on the monitor, uh, this function this maximally flat or binomial function that we just wrote for various values of n is given like this and we see that for all values of n at theta equal to pi by 2 uh, the value the value is 0. So, if we can come back to our written slides. Uh, now, how do we correlate this function with the with the with the formula for multiple section uh, for multiple sections of uh, impedance matching network that we had derived in the previous class how do we reconcile this formula with that so the first thing we note that uh, is which we note is that gamma in theta is given by this this is what we just uh, derived and uh, if we expand this using the binomial uh, theorem then we get an expression like this. Now, in the previous uh, module we had seen that for multiple sections of transmission line the input reflection coefficient is also given by this formula. So, we see that these two equations are very similar, so similar that we can find out an expression we can write the values of gamma k like this. So, see what we achieved here, we have written here an expression for gamma k in terms of the coefficients of the binomial function of the, the coefficients of the equation that we stated for the binomial transformer and so now gamma k is in terms of gamma l, recall that k refers to the sections of the multi section transformer. So, all the sections of the multi section transformer the gamma k values are now written nice written down nicely. So, we have done the reverse that we were trying to do that we said that we have a certain bandwidth requirement, we have a certain gamma l, how can we design the z k. Once we find out the gamma k values we can easily find out the z k. Now, some of the properties since this is the equation for the gamma k for the binomial transformer a few of the properties that we have to keep in mind are that uh, this gamma l can be positive or negative that is fine. So, then so then this gamma k which is dependent on gamma l is all positive or all negative. If gamma k is all positive or all negative then that means that the z k's are all uniformly decreasing or uniformly increasing. Why is that? Because gamma k recall is equal to this is the formula for uh, gamma k that we had 
found in the previous module. If gamma k is negative, then z k plus 1 is uh, or I should write the modulus of z k plus 1 uh, is lesser than z k. In other words, the every subsequent stage has a lower characteristic impedance as compared to the pre preceding stage or if gamma k is positive, then that means every subsequent stage has higher characteristic impedance as compared to the preceding one. So, so then this is how we can do the design and uh, you know if we if we use that same approximation using that logarithmic uh, series that we had done in the previous uh, lecture uh, then we can write this gamma k in terms of ln uh, z k plus 1 upon z k so we can simply have you know that uh, ln z k plus 1 upon z k is equal to twice of gamma k. This in turn is nearly equal to now from here we can get uh, uh, the reason we do this approximation is because if we take this expression for gamma k then we will get more equations then there are variables uh, but on doing this approximation for gamma k that is this particular approximation uh, we reduce the number of equations and uh, we also get consistent solutions so using this formula and with this in the lhs and this in the rhs we can easily find out zk plus 1 in terms of zk and then we do this for each of the stages. So, first we find out z k, then we find out z k plus 1 and from z k plus 1 value we find out z k plus 2 and so on. So, this is how the design takes place. Uh, here is a three section uh, binomial transformer, the input uh, reflection coefficient uh, uh, that we designed. Uh, we see that there is a slight uh, you know slight mismatch between the exact binomial function represented by the blue line and this red line representing what we actually implemented. So, this is what we actually implemented on a tool called ADS here this is the three sections of our impedance matching network. Uh, these are the values for z1, z2 and z3 that we obtained using the using the binomial equations that we just derived. Uh, what we notice is that first of all one thing uh, that I should mention for binomial transformers is that they are symmetric that is the first stage is similar has the same characteristic impedance as the last stage. The other thing is when we do this design we see that there is a slight mismatch between the exact binomial formula and this design that we have implemented on circuit and the mismatch is because if we can come back to the written slides for a moment is because of this approximation this logarithmic approximation that we did uh, because of this uh, there is this slight uh, slight mismatch so that was all about design using the binomial uh, using the binomial uh, transformer then we will uh, consider one more transformer which is the chebyshev and uh, so let us see what is the chebyshev so so the chebyshev uh, if we the first two in order to understand the chebyshev uh, transformer uh, these are the chebyshev polynomials if we can uh, if we can see it properly for various orders uh, or values of n as we call these are the chebyshev polynomials 
if you know the expression for this Chebyshev polynomials is given by this equation T 1 x represents the first order T 2 the second order and the T 3 the third order. Now, these Chebyshev uh, polynomials they verify the property uh, T n x T n cos theta is equal to cos n theta. If you can for a moment again go back to our uh, slides, monitor slides. What you see is that for theta, these are the Chebyshev polynomials once again. For theta between minus 1 and plus 1, the values of the Chebyshev polynomial represented by this gamma is also confined to this to this range that is minus 1 to plus 1. So, coming back to our written slides, so then you see that this uh, when the argument of this Chebyshev polynomial is between minus 1 if, uh, if we uh, when the argument of this Chebyshev polynomial is between minus 1 and plus 1 the output is also between minus 1 and plus 1. So, then uh, from here uh, what we can see is that uh, if we map our uh, range you know that if we map our pass band as we call into this range then the R then our output of this Chebyshev polynomial since that is also restricted then that also will be limited because of this restriction. So, you know one way uh, so if we choose say our x uh, if we see for modulus x greater than 1, we have the modulus of the Chebyshev polynomial greater than 1. And if we restrict the so suppose say our x between minus 1 to plus 1, so that modulus of x is 1 and this is mapped to the end points of our bandwidth theta m pi minus theta m, then we can achieve the impedance matching. This is the logic you know this is the intuition behind the Chebyshev polynomial. Now, suppose we choose our x this x that we are talking about which we are mapping the argument of the Chebyshev function as cos theta upon cos theta m which is equal to cos theta sec theta m then if we define our input reflection prototype function as like this then first thing that you note is that our argument is between minus 1 to plus 1 and the terms which are outside this which are outside the Chebyshev function are serve to scale the gamma in value to the appropriate limits. So, suppose so this is the prototype function just like for the binomial uh, expression or the binomial transformer we had a prototype function for the Chebyshev transformer this is our prototype function. So, again just like we did it for the binomial transformer if we take gamma in theta equal to 0 then that should be equal to gamma L and by substituting theta equal to 0 in this expression we get this is equal to A T n sec theta m from which we can derive a value expression for A as gamma L upon T n sec theta m from which uh, we can then straight away write uh, gamma in theta is equal to gamma L upon T n sec theta m e raised to minus j n theta 
T n sec theta m cos theta. Again, if we define a gamma m value, that is the maximum allowable in magnitude of the input reflection coefficient, then that is equal to gamma in of theta m and that expression for that will be So, this is the limit and then if this is the value we see that uh, gamma m is simply equal to the magnitude of A. So, then we can also write gamma in theta as equal to plus minus gamma m So, this is the complete expression for the gamma in theta and uh, we see that this input reflection coefficient is dependent on both gamma m and theta m and we note that uh, this uh, positive sign is for z l greater than z 0 that is when gamma l is positive and this negative sign is for z l lesser than z 0 that is when gamma l is negative. Now, how do we go from here to, to the design that the nice expressions that we had derived for our binomial transformer, how do we do that? So, first thing is uh, let us try to ex find an expression for the bandwidth. So, we saw that gamma m is equal to gamma l upon T n sec theta m. Uh, using an alternative uh, definition of the Chebyshev polynomials, this I did not state, but this is also an expression for these polynomials. So, from here I can write uh, so, substituting this here, I can write get an expression for sec theta m as follows. And from this once we find out the value of theta m, we can find out an expression for the bandwidth So, given a certain value of uh, gamma m, we first find out the value of theta m and from this using this formula and once we find out the value of theta m, we find out the fractional bandwidth. So, this is how the design goes. First, this is step 1, this is step 2 and then uh, we just simply equate you know the values of the Chebyshev polynomial with uh, our expression for the input reflection coefficient of a multi stage inf uh, impedance matching network. But then the expan expansion for the for the Chebyshev polynomial is not so simple as we saw as the case was for the binomial polynomial. So, let us see how we can do that. See the if we go by the various uh, various uh, polynomial orders, the third order uh, Chebyshev polynomial can be written like this. So, it is not so straightforward as that for the binomial polynomial, but here we have to find an expression for expansion for each and every order itself. There is no general formula like using the combinatorial functions as we saw for the binomial expansion. 
the third uh, T4 uh, sec theta m cos theta can be expanded like this. So, these are the expansions and uh, for say n equal to 3 gamma in theta using these expressions that I derived in the previous slide, you can write gamma in theta is equal to This is the expansion from the from the Fourier expansion that we had uh, derived. So this, when expanded for a third order, we get uh, like this. Uh, this is of course only true for symmetrical transformers. And using the Chebyshev uh, expansion that we just saw, gamma in theta can be given like this. Now, so this is the expansion for the third order Chebyshev polynomial and this is the expansion for the expression for the input reflection coefficient for a third order uh, impedance transformation network and provided the network is symmetrical. So then once we have derived these two expressions, this one and this one, we have to equate the two and once we equate the two we get gamma 0 equal to gamma 3, this is because of the symmetry and gamma 1 is equal to gamma 2. So, these once we of course find out the values of gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2 and gamma 3, then we apply this formula. From which we can, from which once we know gamma 0, then we can find out z1, once we know gamma 1, we can find out z2 and so on. So then this is the complete design procedure. Uh, so, in summary I want to say that for the Chebyshev uh, polynomial the expansion is not so straightforward and for each order we have to have an individual expansion and it is somewhat complicated. Uh, the binomial expansion on the other hand is much simpler, it is uh, we have a straightforward formula for the binomial expansion and it is much easier to handle and to design of course. The question then is why do we have this Chebyshev uh, transformer in the first place? To answer that question, uh, if we can go back to the monitor slides for a moment. Uh, see these are the Chebyshev polynomial expansions for various orders. This is the red one is for n equal to 1. Note that this n equal to 1 ex, uh, polynomial is very similar to the binomial expansion. Then the blue one represents n equal to 2, black one n equal to 3 and the violet or purple one represents the n equal to 4 Chebyshev polynomial. The advantage of the Chebyshev polynomial is that first I should say the disadvantage. The disadvantage is that there are multiple ripples. It is not a maximally flat uh, expression. 
but then because of the presence of ripples we can because we are allowing some ripples in the pass band we can allow our bandwidth to be further expanded for example, say if our gamma m is along this line for n equal to 4 say this purple line, say our gamma m is like this, then because we are allowing some ripples, never of course crossing the value of gamma m, because we are allowing these ripples, we can give more allowance to our bandwidth. So, by providing for more ripples in the pass band, we are enabling a wider bandwidth that is the reason we go for the Chebyshev polynomial. The butter the binomial uh, polynomial or the binomial transform on other hand has a very flat response has a very flat characteristics in the pass band of the impedance matching bandwidth. But then uh, the problem is because we are making it so flat we are not allowing any ripples in the pass band and that is why our uh, bandwidth is somewhat constrained as compared to a Chebyshev polynomial. So, that is the trade off between a Chebyshev polynomial or the Chebyshev transformer and the binomial transformer. Binomial transformer has a very flat response, but lesser bandwidth. The Chebyshev polynomial because it is allowing some ripples, it has a wider band. In the next uh, module, we shall be covering some special uh, impedance transformation node, uh, networks known as tapers. Thank you.